Everybody loves a good team up. We like seeing Batman team up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Naruto team up with Sasuke in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, even Vegeta and Goku teaming up to create Gogeta or Vegito. But what happens when the bad guys team up? What happens when the bad guys decide to see how many of them they can get together and form an alliance against the good? Well, that's still absolutely incredible and we all love watching it happen, but it is a problem. But the problem with grouping up bad guys is that bad guys are usually bad guys or girls and therefore making teams of bad guys is kind of difficult because big personalities tend to clash in a way non-conducive to teamwork and the akatsuki is no exception to this rule see the akatsuki is a group of nine or ten or eleven bad guys in naruto depending on who you ask but the problem with putting up to eleven murderous sociopaths in the same room with each other is that somebody's probably gonna get murdered and now the team just got one person smaller and therefore one person weaker so when you're building a team of bad guys you gotta try and find personalities that are gonna work together so the bad guys can maximize each other's power and therefore the akatsuki actually goes one step further than just collecting a couple of bad guys and giving them cloaks. See, the Akatsuki took the whole bad guy meetup thing one step further by splitting all of these bad guys into two-man teams, of which there's five, kind of. And all of these two-man teams are made with the personalities and abilities of the people in the two-man teams in mind. At least, that's what they say. Because I would argue that the two-man teams of the Akatsuki, while they do line up personality-wise, do not line up power-wise. In fact, I would even take it one step further and say that the abilities of most of the two-man teams in the Akatsuki tend to contradict each other, and that the two-man teams that were selected in the Akatsuki might have actually been one of the biggest reasons the Akatsuki had a downfall in the first place. Because obviously, every single member of the Akatsuki is killed. But if every single member of the Akatsuki was placed with somebody who could maximize their potential, I'd argue they'd still be kicking. Which obviously wouldn't be good for the plot of Naruto, but it would be good for the Akatsuki. And in today's video, we're not worried about the plot of Naruto, which is why today we're talking how I would fix the Akatsuki team specifically to be as balanced, broken, and long-lasting as possible. And therefore, probably win in the battle against all of the major villages and enact the Eye of the Moon play. But it's not my world, so I'm not worried. But before we get to balancing or breaking anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, hit that noti bell. And if you like the idea of me remixing anime, you're gonna love my other channel, The Weave Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto or Boruto, I talk all other anime. And if you just like the idea of me talking about anime, you're gonna love my anime podcast, Utaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So the Akatsuki, one of the most iconic villain groups, if not just anime groups in history history. Whether it be the cloaks, the members, the deaths, or the rings, everything about this group is iconic. And quite honestly, I'm not going to sit here and complain about the teams on the Akatsuki. In fact, I would argue the teams of the Akatsuki are substantially better than any other team grouping in all of Naruto, being leagues better than something like the Konoha 13's teams. Now this makes sense, because all of the members of the Akatsuki came to the Akatsuki while they were fully formed adults, with all of their moves already learned. On top of this, they had already developed their personalities. They Therefore, pretty much everything you needed to take into account about a human being before signing them up to be with another human being 24-7, you had. And because of this, a lot of the Akatsuki teams work pretty well. Like I've already said, the personalities of every Akatsuki duo team pretty much match up as well as they possibly could. Sasori and Deidara, who are both either artists or artisans, get together through their love of art. Itachi and Kisame get along because they're both fiercely loyal to each other. Konan and Nagato get along because they're childhood friends. Kakuzu and Hidan get along because Kakuzu is unable to kill Hidan, and Obito and Zetsu get along because they're pulling the strings on everything. But just because all of these duos get along doesn't mean, to me at least, that they're as optimized as they could be. As even though the personalities of these duos match up, the abilities simply don't. So let's go over each and every single one of these Akatsuki duos and point out where I think there are inadequacies. And we'll start with Sasori and Deidara. See, Sasori and Deidara both fall under the same category. Mid to long range specialists who act more in a support role than an attack role. The closest thing that either of them have to any close quarter combat ability would be Saucery's actual body puppet, which has blades in the arms and is able to make a chakra shield and could technically only be killed if you pierce his core. But neither Saucery nor Datara want to be in a close quarter combat fight. Datara's entire kit is developed around his ability to use his explosion release along with his chakra needed clay. And thus Datara ideally is flying on the back of either a C2 dragon or an explosive clay bird while throwing explosives at you. And somewhat unfortunately, Saucery's kit 
is very similar. Just replace the explosive clay with puppets. As Saucery's body is obviously within a puppet, and then his body is an actual puppet, which allows Saucery to be as close to his puppets as any puppet master ever. But still, when it comes down to it, Saucery doesn't want to be battling you in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In fact, the development of the puppet technique was made so Hidden Sand Ninja wouldn't be face-to-face -face with the enemy. Now, obviously, hypothetically, Data Run Saucery can fly around on one of Data Run's birds, and Saucery can control a puppet it from a distance, but this would be inconsistent at best, as the chakra strings would just rip the puppet around. And it's not like Data Rug can offer Saucery aerial support. Let's say Saucery pulls out all 300 of his puppets, and he's battling against the likes of Grady Chia. How exactly can Data Rug support Saucery in this battle? If Data Rug uses explosives, they have as much chance to hurt Sakura as they do Saucery's puppets. And now we just have explosions from Data Rug's explosion release, destroying all of Saucery's chakra strings. And while obviously the destruction of a puppet isn't as bad is the destruction of Saucery, even though that would just be the destruction of a puppet. Their kits just simply don't work together. They're both illusion types, which means any high-speed enemy is going to be able to blitz them and get close to them where they really don't want them to be. They have next to no close quarter combat ability to keep enemies away so the mid-range support specialists can do their work. Of all of the Akatsuki teams, theirs is probably the weakest because of how ill-matched they are, as well as having two of the weaker members of the Akatsuki. The next team we're going to talk about is the zombie duo, which is Hidan and Kakazu. Now, this is a team that complements each other. Not as much as they could, but definitely more than Saucery and Dater. See, Hidan is the weakest member of the Akatsuki. Bar none. He's self-admittedly the slowest attacker in the Akatsuki, and he only has Kenjutsu and his Lord Joshin's summoning circle. So when it comes down to it, Hidan is a close quarter combat specialist, and that's it. If Hidan can't get close enough to make you bleed, he can't do anything. Now, the reason Kakuzu is a somewhat good fit for Hidan, outside of the fact that Kakuzu can't kill Hidan and Kakuzu needs to be placed with somebody who he can't kill because he kept killing partners, is that Kakuzu is a mid-range and close-quarter combat specialist. See, Kakuzu is able to do something that Hidan very much cannot do, and that's use ninjutsu, and he's able to use all five nature releases with ease and at a very high level. In fact, Kakuzu is able to split himself into five entities that are able to control one elemental release. By separating the four masks from his back, each of which has a heart of their own, Kakuzu can essentially create four incredibly powerful clones that control water, wind, lightning, and fire release, with his main body controlling Earth. And all five of these bodies have incredibly powerful AoE attacks that operate on a close to mid-range level. And Kakuzu is also incredible at Taijutsu. And not to mention, with the use of his Earth Grudge Fear, he's able to snag enemies and hold them still. And if he can keep enemies still, Hidan can get their blood and then... GG's. So the zombie duo, as much as they hate each other, actually is a pretty good duo. But they could be better. The third duo is even better than the zombie duo, but once again, not perfect. Because the third duo that we're going to talk about is Kisame and Itachi. Now, this is another duo that complement each other. Kisame is a close quarter combat slash mid-range specialist. He wants to be up close and personal against you to use Samehara to tear through your flesh and therefore seep out your chakra. But he also has an incredibly wide and strong arsenal of water ninjutsu that he can use against you in the mid-range. Now, I wouldn't call Itachi a close quarter specialist, though his taijutsu is incredible. I mean, Edo Tensei Itachi through hands with KCM1 Naruto. I would say Itachi falls more into the classification of mid-range slash support. On top of that, with the usage of his Susano, we could also fall under the defense category, as not only is the Susano basically impenetrable, but his Yada Mirror reflects all ninjutsu. Now, this is a duo whose abilities can complement each other, though Itachi's abilities don't really need much in the way of complementing. See, basically, everything that Itachi wields is a one-hit kill. Sukiyomi, Amaterasu, is Totsuka Blade, with Itachi's only real weakness being that his Susano is incomplete and therefore it can't fly. So in an ideal world, Itachi has a teammate who's able to funnel people towards it, which I guess with the usage of high-level water ninjutsu, Kisame could do. But there's a huge dichotomy between these two characters that I actually believe makes them bad teammates. See, Kisame's entire kit is actually built around a long fight. See, Samehada is not the kind of sword that can cut you in half in one swing. I mean, it could cut me in half in one swing, but I'm not a ninja. A fight against Kisame while he's wielding Samehada is actually just him trying to cut you a couple of times and siphon off all your chakra. And therefore, Kisame is more of a long fighter. However, Itachi is the exact 
opposite. Itachi tries to end the fight as fast as he possibly can, be it through Tsukiyomi, Amaterasu, or the Totsuka Blade. And this is because Itachi runs out of chakra incredibly quickly, while Kisame is considered the tailless tailed beast. Because of this difference in their fighting style, both of them are at very different parts of their fight if they're fighting simultaneously. And in an ideal circumstance, Itachi has somebody with a transport ability who can move him if he ever overextends his chakra. And so even though their abilities do complement each other's a little bit, and personality-wise, these two probably click more than any other duo in the Akatsuki, there are some different points where these two could be substantially better matched to each other. The next duo we're going to talk about is Nagato and Konan. Nagato is a genuine all-arounder. There's nothing he cannot and will not do. That's just the Rinnegan for you. He has the ability to track and sense chakra. He has the ability to heal his six paths of pain. He has the ability to absorb ninjutsu. The Devapath was able to square up with Naruto in his six tails form. He's a close quarter combat, mid-range, long-range, support, defense, healer, everything you could ever want in a person. So matching him up with somebody isn't hard because he basically covers all of the bases by himself. So is Conan a good match for Nagato? Yeah, like I said, he would be well matched with anybody. But Conan herself is a mid-range specialist and probably has the highest battle IQ in the Akatsuki outside of Itachi. So she would also be well suited with a lot of people. And I think honestly, she would be better suited in other teams that allowed her to shine more. Now, obviously she's fiercely loyal to Nagato and hates leaving his side. And there's probably nobody in the Akatsuki who would take protecting Nagato's body as seriously as her. I still think Nagato and Conan would be better if split up. And our last team is Toby and Zetsu. This team is meh. Toby isn't even always teamed up with Zetsu. Zetsu is obviously incredibly powerful. He punched a hole in Madara like Madara was a free coffee punch card. And Toby is Obito, who was also just like Nagato, a complete and utter all-arounder. Well, obviously Zetsu falls more into the support slash IQ role, as Zetsu probably has the highest IQ out of anybody in the Akatsuki. But Zetsu is boring to talk about, so when we're building these new Akatsuki teams, I'm going to replace him with a former member of the Akatsuki, Orochimaru, because he's way more interesting to me. Oh, you don't like that? I don't care, it's my video. And just like that, we've covered all five of the Akatsuki duos. What their roles are in their specific teams, how they feed off of each other, and how they're holding each other back. So how would I fix these duos? Well, I would focus way less on personality and way more on combat ability. Sure, there's a possibility that these two team members kill each other, but there's also the possibility that they get along. And we learned from Akatsuki Hiden, even though each and every single one of them are terrible, they do have the ability to relate to other people, even Hidon. Which is why, first off, I'm breaking up the zombie duo, and I'm placing Hidon with Sasori. See, the biggest thing that Sasori's duo needed was a close quarter combat specialist. And that could have been Kisame, Kakazu, Hidon, and a couple of other people. But most definitely not Datara. Now, the reason I chose Hidon is because Hidon, more than any of the other close quarter combat specialists in the Akatsuki, is straightforward. But the problem with Hidon's straightforwardness is because all he has is his Kenjutsu and no Ninjutsu to back himself up, he's kind of easy to avoid. I mean, he's a guy with a scythe running at you. As long as you stay away from him, you're going to be okay. But what happens if you lose sight of the man with the scythe? That's when he gets dangerous. See, for Hidan, the element of surprise is massive. If you slip up for even a second in a battle against Hidan and lose track of where he is, all he needs is the tiniest amount of your blood and you're dead. But the crazy bit is, it doesn't have to be Hidon who gets your blood. It could be anybody who gets your blood, so long as your blood gets to Hidon. So I can't imagine a better place for a man who thrives on the element of surprise than being lost in the commotion of a 300 puppet army. I mean, Think about it. All Hidan would truly have to do is blend into Sasori's puppet army. And while this onslaught of puppets is attacking the opponent, Hidan can sneak up behind them, slash them, get their blood, and then pierce his heart. Easy as that. Getting lost in the commotion of 300 clattering puppets, some of which are able to do things like magnet release, would not only allow Hidan to maximize his own potential, but also give Hidan the possible ability to just take the blood off of one of Sasori's puppets and then use that for a ritual. A ritual you probably wouldn't be able to stop Hidan from doing, mind you, because Sasori could just keep you away from him until the ritual was done. Because after Hidan gets your blood, it's not like you're necessarily dead. So long as you stop him from drawing the circle and stabbing his heart, you're good. And even though Kakuzu obviously has Earth Grudge Fear, which he can use to hold somebody still, Sasori has Iron Sand Magnet Release, which he could definitely use to hold somebody still. Not to mention, since Hidan is technically the slowest attacker out of the Akatsuki, Sasori could simply attach his puppet strings to Hidan to speed him up. Much in the same way we saw Granny Chio controls Sakura. This would not only probably increase the speed of Hidan, but also allow him to react to things that otherwise he wouldn't see. And if you thought fighting against 300 puppets simultaneously was tough, imagine now that if any of those puppets get a drop of your blood, you die. That 
is substantially more powerful than just a man flying above the puppets throwing bombs at you. But what about that man who flies and throws bombs? Who does he end up with? Well, ironically, he would end up with the other half of the zombie duo, Kakazu, because my second duo would be Kakazu and Daedara. Now, let's assume they get along here because obviously Kakazu has to be placed with people he can't kill. And Kakazu could absolutely and probably would kill Daedara. So personality, so let's put personality aside here for like, 30 seconds. But even if you're actually not putting personality aside, there is some similarities between Kakazu and Daedara that might actually make them get along. Like the fact that both of their lives were ruined by somebody from Konoha, with Kakazu losing in a battle to Hashirama, which led to him being exiled from the Hidden Waterfall, and Daedara being defeated by Itachi, which forced him to join the Akatsuki. So maybe they could bond over their hatred of people from Konoha, or they could bond over the fact that they're both wielders of a forbidden jutsu, with Kakazu wielding Earth Grudge Fear and Daedara having his hand mouths. But even if we're assuming that their personalities don't match up, there are abilities absolutely do. So I know what you're saying here, Nick, you're putting two AOE spammers with each other. And yes, yes I am. See, the biggest problem with the Daedara and Sorcery team is that they didn't have a close quarter combat specialist. But if you add Kakuzo into the mix, even though close quarter combat isn't his specialization, he is incredible at it. Tie that into the fact that if you put both of these people on top of Daedara's exploding bird, you basically have the Naruto version of an AC-130. What do I mean by that? Imagine for a second that not only was Daedara hurling exploding clay bombs bombs at you in the shapes of spiders and birds and dragons and people. But on top of that, behind him was Kakuzo, firing off every kind of elemental release there is. Be they lightning, fire, water, earth, or wind, everything is flying at you. So now, not only do you have to avoid the explosions from Daedara, you have to avoid the ninjutsu from Kakuzo. And it's all happening from a couple hundred meters in the sky, and there's nothing you can do about it unless you fly or have long-range options. It's basically like having Chopper Gunner on Rush you're gonna rack up some kills. But even if you're worried about people screaming about how you're hacking up in the air, you could just put Kakuzu on the ground and you could put Daedara in the sky. And Kakuzu could spam his AoE attacks from the ground while Daedara spammed his AoE attacks from the sky. And considering the fact that Kakuzu has five hearts, Daedara probably wouldn't have to be worried about possibly hurting Kakuzu, as any explosive damage to Kakuzu probably wouldn't even hurt him in the first place because his body is made out of fibers. And even if hypothetically Daedara does hurt Kakuzu, he can just replace one of his masks with the heart of whoever they just killed. And if by some chance somebody manages to close the distance between the explosions and elemental release, Kakuzu can just battle them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It would be an absolute and utter nightmare to battle against these two simultaneously. With the only real problem being that Kakuzu would have to worry about hitting Daedara's explosive clay with lightning release. But there's no stipulation that Kakuzu has to control all elemental releases with every single one of his masks. The reason he did that is so we can combine certain elemental releases to make them stronger. He could just pick up like a second fire mask or a second wind mask, because the masks represent the ninjutsu prowess of the person that the heart was taken from. After Kakuzu and Daedara, I would have Nagato and Orochimaru. I know, they wouldn't get along. The second that Nagato phased out while controlling all six paths of pain, Orochimaru would bite him and be like, your body's mine now, because Orochimaru would want the Renegon. But then again, maybe he wouldn't want Nagato's body, because I mean, he was in the Akatsuki and he never tried Nagato. And if we're being real, that kind of makes sense, because Nagato's body is like nailed into the ghetto statue. So like, I wouldn't want that body either. Orochimaru Orochimaru would probably just pluck out his Renegon and run away really fast. He's definitely not going to be as concerned for protecting Nagato's body as Conan is. But once again, perfect world here, okay? Stick with me. Nagato and Orochimaru are the puppet crew, and not actual ninja puppets. See, obviously, we all know that Nagato controls the six paths of pay, with each one being a manifestation of one of the six base powers of the Renegon. And that alone is one of the most powerful jutsus in the entirety of Naruto. You know who else wields one of the most powerful jutsus in the entirety of Naruto? Orochimaru. So how would Orochimaru join this puppet crew? a little jutsu known as Edo Tensei. The combination of these two together would be awful, but awful for the people they fight, not awful for each other. Because Orochimaru and Nagato could just hole up wherever Nagato's body is currently nailed to, and both of them respectively could just control their puppets from a distance. You thought fighting the Six Paths of Pain was difficult? Now try fighting Hashirama and Tobirama with them simultaneously. Even though Orochimaru likes to keep very tight control over anybody he Edo Tensei, he can also just give a prime directive to the people he brings back, like, hey, go destroy Konoha, or hey, go kill Jiraiya. But Orochimaru could also be out there cutting it up with the puppets, and he could just leave an 
Kaido Tensei Ninja behind to watch Nagato's body. On top of this, let's not forget that Orochimaru battled against either a three or a four-tailed version two cloak Naruto. And like kind of one, but also kind of just stalemated. Orochimaru, while he may be more focused on things like ninjutsu and genjutsu, also can definitely cut it up with some taijutsu. And let's say you somehow identify exactly where Nagato is and you're trying to fire something like a tailed beast bomb at his location, Orochimaru has the triple Rashomon gates, which has been shown to stop a tailed beast bomb, the strongest offensive ability in Naruto. Outside of things like Indra's arrow and the tailed beast Rasen Shuriken and the ultra big ball Rasen Shuriken, you get it. Not to mention both of these people separately have destroyed Konoha. If they both attacked Konoha simultaneously, it wouldn't have been rebuilt twice. That is an absolutely disgusting duo that I want nothing to do with. They also both had beef with Jiraiya, so they absolutely would have embarrassed him. Speaking of people who have things in common, our next team would be Itachi and Obito. I know, I know, Nick, you're making a lot of top heavy teams here, but the way I'm building it, all of these teams are gonna be very powerful anyways. So why am I placing Itachi and Obito together? Is it because they've worked together previously during the Uchiha massacre? I mean, well, that doesn't hurt. They have a track record of working together successfully. I mean, all of the Uchiha are dead. But Nick, they don't like each other. I mean, they don't hate each other. I mean, obviously Obito was like vaguely aware of Itachi joining the Akatsuki in order to spy on the Akatsuki. And obviously Itachi was there mostly to spy on Obito for the hidden leaf. But let's not sit here and act like Itachi wasn't doing the Akatsuki's bidding in order to keep his his cover. My man really kept that cover. He killed hundreds of people. At what point is the intel no longer worth it? When it comes down to it, these two working together would be absolutely terrifying. They're kind of the defense duo, because Itachi has an impenetrable defense in his Susano and his Yadamir, and Obito obviously has his Kamui, making him borderline impossible to hit. Not to mention, as they're both Uchiha's, they understand each other's movesets. And if Itachi ever overexerts himself, like in his battle against Yagura, Obito can take them away using Kamui. Can either simply place Itachi in the Kamui dimension until he recovers or just Kamui them away to safety. On top of this, Obito has the ability to spiralize his great fireball technique, which makes it more powerful through the usage of his combo, which means hypothetically Obito could do this, but to Itachi's Amaterasu. On top of this, since Obito can basically avoid whatever he needs to, Itachi wouldn't have to worry about using some of his bigger, more dangerous moves. Itachi wouldn't have to worry about hitting Obito with Amaterasu or the Totsuka Blade. Well, it's actually technically unclear as to whether or not the Totsuka Blade would be able to seal Obito, because it might strike your soul, not your physical body. And who knows if he actually Kamui's away his soul. Not to mention that Itachi and any wielder of the Susano is able to bring other people into their Susano. So not only would Obito be unhittable because of his Kamui, he could also just simply go into Itachi Susano. Tie that into the fact that Obito is in possession of all of the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, some of which are probably Fugaku's MS, and these two pairing up could lead to Itachi getting EMS. So while both of these guys obviously have incredible mid-range options, slapping both of these defense-heavy all-arounders on the same team would would make an unkillable duo, and they would probably be the strongest duo on the Akatsuki, which is why I probably should have saved them for last. But instead, in last, we have Kisame and Konan. Why are they together? Because both of their names start with K. No, the real reason they're together is because I built the other four teams, and then I was like, who do I have left? And then it was like, oh, Kisame and Konan, but ironically, they work together really well. Why do they work together very well? Because for the first time on this list, personality-wise, they line up perfectly. Kisame and Konan are two of the most loyal people, not just in the Akatsuki, but possibly in anime history. Kisame loves Itachi, like a brother, and would do anything to protect Itachi. He is that close and that loyal to him. And Konan is incredibly loyal to Nagato, so much so that she leads the hidden reign for him while Nagato is away doing Akatsuki thing for years. She stands by Nagato's side every time he uses the six-pack the pain so she can protect his body. She took his whole body back to the hidden rain and protected his Rinnegan with her life. These two have put on a team with each other would be fiercely loyal to each other. On top of that, both of them aren't the biggest fans of the Akatsuki. In fact, I would say these two are probably the least happy to be on the Akatsuki out of anybody in the Akatsuki, outside of like maybe Datara. It's not like either of them were going to leave the Akatsuki, it's just both of them didn't really have a strong reason to be there. And on top of all of this, their abilities complement each other incredibly well. Isame is a close quarter combat spell specialist whose entire kit revolves around sucking your chakra out through cuts. Cuts that usually Samehara inflicts. However, if his partner was made out of paper, there could be a lot more cuts. Meaning that Konan could amplify the amount of chakra that Samehara would be able to consume from an opponent, vastly accelerating the timeline for them running out of chakra. Tie that into the fact that Kisame is a close quarter combat specialist and Konan is a mid-range specialist and 
that's compatibility right there. But also, when it comes to intelligence, at least intelligence in battle, Kisame is probably close to the bottom of the list in the Akatsuki. It's not that he's dumb, he's just not necessarily intelligent. And honestly, the Akatsuki is pretty top-heavy with intelligence. With Nagato, Itachi, Zetsu, Obito, all high-level geniuses existing in the Akatsuki. And right up there with all of those geniuses is Kona, whose battle IQ and ability to prep for an enemy was so high that she forced Obito to use Izanagi, which is the first time that we ever saw Izanagi and was the dumbest thing Kishimoto ever did. Listen, I understand that Conan can't kill Obito, but don't write in a mechanism that allows people with Sharingan to reality warp. With Conan's battle IQ and Kisame's endless chakra pool, which would be made even more endless by the fact that Conan would be able to bolster how many cuts that Samehara could suck chakra out of, this team would be nigh impossible to beat in a fight. There's no end in sight to one of their staminas, and the longer you fight, the more Conan can figure out about your fighting style, which gives her time to formulate a plan to destroy you. And the longer you battle these two, the weaker you get because you are constantly having your chakra seeped into the guy with an endless amount of chakra. And if you try to get close to Conan, Kisame will stop you. The only real problem with these two working together is the fact that Conan uses a bunch of paper bombs and Kisame uses a bunch of water ninjutsu. But considering the fact that Conan split an ocean with paper bombs and also hails from the land hidden in the rain, water in water ninjutsu has never really appeared to be an issue for paper bombs. And thus, even though these two were slapped together because they hadn't been placed on any other teams, they ironically probably work better as a duo than anybody else on this list. Though they obviously wouldn't be as powerful as Obito and Itachi. We all know this. But yeah, that's it. That's how I would fix the Akatsuki teams. Would you guys have chosen differently? Who would you have put with who? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'll admit putting two of the strongest people in the Akatsuki together doesn't exactly balance all of the teams, but listen, their abilities are compatible.